Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and we're moving along with our Commander 2017 deck tech and upgrade series. In this video we're tackling Vampiric Bloodlust, so get ready to be all vampiric up in here. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you do, remember to hit that like button, helps out a lot. Our blood-sucking horde is led by Edgar Markov, Patriarch of the Markov Clan. Three of anything, one red, one white, and one black for a 4-4 vampire knight with first strike and haste. Whenever he attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control. Straightforward? Sure, but also plenty powerful. Now, he is expensive to cast, but he can attack as soon as you drop him, and first strike does give him a nice advantage in combat. Vampires are no strangers to plus one plus one counters, so a trigger like this is certainly welcome and expected. Eminence. Whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 black vampire creature token. Of all the Eminence commanders, Edgar is second to the Ur-Dragon, the most supportive as far as tribes are concerned. He doesn't have a cost for his Eminence trigger and doesn't have a cost for his combat trigger, and both directly impact the power of vampires. Luckily for us, this means that the net for creating this deck is wide open. All that Edgar cares about, more vampires, stronger vampires, all the vampires, we can oblige him quite easily. Easily. The other two potential commanders in this deck are Mathis, Fiend Seeker, and Lycia, Sanguine Tribune. Unlike some of the other strategies we've looked at so far, both of these legends bring powerful and useful abilities to Vampiric Bloodlust. This is where we begin to see the value in Edgar being so open-ended as a commander. Mathis is wonderful. Playing politics at the table is something Mardu decks have been doing for quite a while, and Mathis isn't all that subtle about it. You want the table to kill whatever you don't like, so give them incentive. Give them treats for doing your dirty work. Great way to call the strong so you can bash in with your undead rabble. Certainly a control card, Mathis is a perfect addition to this deck, and if there are strong creatures on the battlefield, you want him. Lycia, on the other hand, also actually not subtle, but way more direct in how she does business. Playing into the life gain sub-theme of a vampire deck, Lycia will cost near nothing to play a lot of the time. Be a champion in combat with first strike and lifelink, and as soon as she drops, you can make her a 7-7. I don't believe she's meant to be the commander of a deck due to her tunnel visioned ability, but she is a wonderful part of the 99 in any strategy that cares about life gain. And vampire decks, oh yeah, they care about life gain a lot. Again, as far as these pre-cons go, Mathis and Lycia are two of the best lieutenants for their eminence commander. A lot of power at the legendary level. With Edgar, Mathis, and Lycia leading the army, this Mardu Vampire's deck has pretty much free reign to be built however you want it to be built. If Edgar had to choose a path, it would be one of aggression. Mathis would choose a prison slash control strategy, and Lycia would choose a life gain deck. Since Edgar is leading the show, we're going to focus on aggression with a life gain sub theme and some control goodness to keep ourselves alive. As far as creatures are concerned, Edgar isn't the only one who got the plus one plus one memo. Captivating Vampire, Patron of the Vein, Stromkirk Captain, and Bloodlord of Vazgoth are all champions of counters and improving Vampire's power. Remember, we get 1-1 one, one Vampires whenever we cast a Vampire spell, so a lot of these effects are going to be even more powerful. Next up, Lycia supports Lifelinkers, the only reason a card like Tithe Drinker would be in this deck. It also comes with Vampire Nighthawk, Blood Baron of Escopa, which should already have half of its trigger activated since it's Commander and you're a life gain deck, and then indirect life gain cards like Malakir Blood Witch and Sangromancer. Pretty solid suite of life gain vampires in this deck. And of course, no Mardu deck would be complete without creatures that function as removal. Dark Imposter, Anuan the Ruin Sage, Drynoclostria Blood Chief, Vein Drinker is a sweet addition. To be completely honest, this is an impressive group of vampires they've included in this deck. If you want to build any type of vampire travel deck in Commander, you're going to want at least 80-90% to 90 of these creatures. Wizards did a real good job here, but there are fewer vampires than I thought there would be, less than 25, which may not seem like a huge issue to you, but Edgar is dependent on vampires being has to be good, I'd like to add just a few more. Olivia Voldaren, Olivia Mobilized for War, Drana, Liberator of Malakir, and Kalitas, Blood Chief of Get. If you want a surge of power in your new vampire deck, you cannot do better than these four legends. Absurdly strong, ruthlessly aggressive, and they'll make your deck so powerful for such a small cost. What's interesting is that this is the first real Mardu vampire deck, so we can take advantage of that by getting to run Vishkal in the same deck as Tariel in the same deck as Queen Marchesa. If you want a few non-vampire powerhouses, can't go wrong with those two. If we're talking vampire staples you just gotta grab, Bloodline Keeper is one of the most powerful vampires of all time and hilariously fun to play with. Vampire Nocturnus is crazy strong, Necropolis Regent doesn't directly impact vampires, but that trigger speaks for itself. Colostria Highborn for more life gain awesomeness, be sure to include Vampire Hexmage to kill Planeswalkers in a moment's notice. Those are all the usual suspects. 
Some lesser known vampires you might enjoy. Mephidros Vampire pumps all of your creatures and makes them all vamps. With all the plus one plus one counter shenanigans going on, Falcon Wrath Exterminator can kill most anything. Great card. And Shadow Alley Denizen is one of my favorite vampires to help you trigger your combat damage to player abilities if you need a way through. Especially saucy since the vampires that Edgar creates are black. That's synergy. Moving on, the spell power in this deck is higher than average, I would say, and it's also unusually synergistic with the tribe. New Blood lets you just take things. Blood Tribute is going to put your life total out of harm's way instantly, or at sorcery speed, you know what I mean. The deck includes Consuming Vapors as another removal spell to gain new life for Lycia Trickery. As a matter of fact, with all this life gain, we should put some life loss in the deck to take advantage. Wizards thought of that, at least to a certain degree. Skeletal Scrying, Damnable Pact, Read the Bones, Ambitions Cost, your life total is a resource. That's always been true in Magic, but Vampires bring that to the next level. Add in some more control slash removal like Go for the Throat, Crackling Doom, Fell the Mighty, and Merciless Eviction, and you have a healthy spell package built out of self-harm and harm to all others. Of course, there are a few spells not included that we gotta get in there right now. Urge to Feed is the number one priority, one of the best vampire-related spells out there, can't miss that one. Also, some more single-targeted removal couldn't hurt. Maybe an Utter End or Hero's Downfall, even something like Feast of Blood, removal and you gain life. If you're looking for spells that are more aggressive, Vampiric Fury can end the game on the spot. The new Kindred Charge should have been in this deck, just crazy. And if you want to be even more on the nose, Stensia Banquet can hit opponents for 10 or 20 by the time you get your family out there. The artifact and enchantment spread in Vampiric Bloodlust is more impressive than most of the other Commander 2017 offerings. In addition to the normal Mana Rock situation, this deck gives you Blade of the Blood Chief for Vampire Ownage, but it also brings Door of Destinies and Well of Lost Dreams and friggin' Skull Clamp. If you're looking for the deck with great artifacts, this is a wonderful choice, besides the cat deck, which we'll talk about tomorrow. As far as enchantments are concerned, same thing. In this deck, you get Underworld Connections, Blind Obedience, Black Market, and Sanguine Bond, all popular in Commander, all good in this deck, and all just generally useful. Add these to Newcomers, Kindred Boon, and Heirloom Blade, and again, real strong artifact and enchantment package. If you want something a bit more focused, I think Whip of Erebos is a good include here. Also, since we're huge on Tribal Power, Urza's Incubator, Coat of Arms, and Obelisk of Erd. Any combination of those and you will not be disappointed. Honestly, if you can afford it or find one, Eldrazi Monument could be great here. You're creating vampires pretty quickly, losing one of them per turn to be indestructible, huge, and half-flying seems decent. Enchantment suggestions, I have a few and I think they're fantastic. Dictate of Erebos is a solid control card. Anointed Procession takes advantage of your Edgar Markov trigger in a big way, doubling up on your tokens. Phyrexian Reclamation gives you an important avenue to resurrection. And Blood Chief Ascension might as well already be enabled in this strategy. You'll be gaining so much life, just wow. Now the land base for this deck is absolutely playable out of the box, 100% just fine. Command Tower is there, Opal Palace is there, Path of Ancestry is all there. In addition, we get the ever-important Evolving Wilds, Bounce Lands, Gain Lands, and Tap Lands. Pretty normal stuff. In a deck like this in particular, there isn't much room for improvement beyond Shock Lands, Fetch Lands, Urborg, Nykthos, potentially Rogue's Passage, Mortuary Mire. All in all, this land base is pretty well optimized. I wouldn't worry about it for a second out of the box. It's actually pretty good stuff here. The last thing we have to talk about is the Planeswalker card type. Now, I didn't really want to cover Planeswalkers too much in these videos because everyone knows that they're strong, but I think a few are especially powerful in Vampiric Bloodlust. Liliana Vest is where we'll start. Everyone knows by now, solid tutor ability can force discards and eventually bring back everything, always strong and relatively inexpensive. The bigger issue comes from Soren Markov. Now, I won't lie to you, this guy is house banned a lot due to the second ability, but I can't say I blame groups that do that. But I have to recommend him. He's a Markov. His first ability is great for life gain synergy. He'll help Nykthos if you upgrade into it. And yeah, the second ability is bonkers and you shouldn't have to worry about reliably casting him. You decide how evil you want to be. That's up to you, not me. All I can do is give you the option. What you do with that is yours. Don't blame me for brawls that will definitely ensue. When it's all said and done, Vampiric Bloodlust is surprisingly fair and balanced. The legends are versatile, the creature package helps support them, the spells do the same, the new cards are fun to play with, and the land base is relatively stable. Of the decks we've looked at so far, Vampiric Bloodlust is probably going to play the best out of the package, at least in terms of stability. Go Edgar Markov, you do your dead thing, man. 
So what do you think about Vampiric Bloodlust? Do you like vampires? Is this the kind of deck you want? Have you bought it yet? What upgrades would you include? I'd love to hear what you have to say, so please leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll chat about it. Also, be sure to stay tuned to the channel for our last Commander 2017 deck tech and upgrade, and then some content that you might not expect coming to you real soon, so keep on the lookout. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. With Commander 2017 out, it looks like nowhere in the world seems to have it. If you want to get your vampire on, you can do that right now from TCG Player for $40. Pretty good deal if you ask me, considering it seems to be nowhere. If you don't have a local game store or a big box store and you can't seem to find these, just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel we all win. Enjoy.